What's up? What are we running from? You're on your own, lady. Oh. Man, my heart rate's really going. The heart rate. What, what are we talking about? What are we referring to there? Well, we're talking about how fast our heart is beating or how fast our heart is pumping blood around the body. But when we talk about chemical reactions, well, what are we referring to when we deal with rate? Well, let me, let me get changed and we'll talk about that. Now, when we talk about rate, really we're just referring to how fast or slow something happens. And when we deal with something in a chemical reaction, well, we're dealing with how fast or slow a chemical reaction is occurring. To be more specific, and to make an even finer point on it, really what we're dealing with is how fast is a product being produced, or how quickly is something, a reactant, being used up. And there is a way that we can express this quantitatively. That is, we can take a look at the change in the concentration of the reactant per unit time, or we can take a look in the change in the concentration of the product per unit time. That is, how quickly does the concentration of the reactant or the reactants decrease, and how quickly does the concentration of the product or the products increase. And so when we take a look at these representations, we can have a quantitative expression of this, and we see this represented in the formulas. I want you to keep in mind that we're dealing with rates. We're talking about the rate of change. So when we deal with concentrations, we're talking about the rate, and change, the rate of change of the concentration. So we're dealing with moles per liter per second. How much does the concentration change per second? Now, it's important to note that the rate is not constant. And if you think about this, it should make a little bit of sense. As we go through the reaction, the concentration or amount of reactants is going to decrease, while the amount of products or the concentration of products is going to increase. So when we deal with this rate, the rate of consumption of the reactants is actually going to go down because we have more and more of the reactant being used up and therefore less and less of it remaining. So the rate of this reaction is going to slow both in the use of uh, the reactant and in the production of the product. So it is important to note that over time, the rate of a reaction is going to decrease as long as we don't add more reactant to that particular reaction. Now let's go back to this farmer's field that I ended up in and we'll talk a little bit about an important process and not only chemistry, but globally in terms of the worldwide production of fertilizer. And this is something referred to as the Haber process. So the Haber process is basically just the production of ammonia, NH3, from nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. Now if we take a look at, let's say, the rate of ammonia production, so the rate of the production of the product here, and assign it a value of 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter per second. So every second we're producing 4 times 10 to the negative 3 moles per liter. So that's our concentration production. If we know that and we know the mole ratio, we can take a look at the relationship between the number of moles of the reactants and products and of the consumption of these reactants if we know the concentration change of the product. That is, if we know the rate of any one of the reactants or products, we can use the mole ratio to figure out the rate of consumption or production of anything else in that reaction. So let's take a look at the rate of nitrogen consumption, the rate of hydrogen uh, consumption. So just taking a look at the mole ratio and the rate of ammonia production, you should see that you're going to get half uh, the consumption of nitrogen because it's one to two moles. So for every two moles of uh, ammonia being produced, you're going to use a half amount or half an equivalent amount of nitrogen gas. Whereas the hydrogen consumption, you're going to have one and a half times that of the production of ammonia because it's a three to two ratio. Now, if we look at this quantitatively and want to express this as an equation or as a relationship, how would we go about doing that? Well, this is probably one of the best ways to go about doing it because it relates all of the reactants and products to one another. So basically the way that it works is you can take the rate of any of them, put it over the coefficient from the balanced chemical equation, and set it equal to any of the other rates over their coefficient for the balanced chemical equation. So if you weren't able to figure out how to work through uh, establishing the rates for either nitrogen or hydrogen, let's just take an example of one of them. So let's take a look at establishing the relationship 
between, let's say, the um, ammonia and the production of, say, the hydrogen gas, because that's the more complex of the two, so let's take a look at that one. So if we were to do that, we would ignore the rate of nitrogen consumption, just take a look at the relationship between the two things that we're trying to create a relationship between. One of them, we know the rate. We know the rate of ammonia um, production. It's 4.0 times 10 to the negative 3. That was provided to us. We're now trying to figure out the rate of hydrogen consumption based on this relationship, this ratio of 3 to 1 between hydrogen consumption and ammonia production. And so we set up our relationship just in equivalence like this. We set it up like this and basically we just solve for the unknown. And in doing so, we should arrive at a rate that is one and a half times that of the ammonia production because it's a three to two ratio. And going through this calculation, you can see that you get 6.0 times 10 to the negative three moles per liter per second. So moles per liter seconds. And this is the rate of hydrogen consumption. The important thing that we need to deal with with rates is that you'll notice that it's always a positive expression. We always talk about it positively. So we deal with the rate of uh, reactant consumption the rate of product production. And so we always talk about it in terms of a positive value, and you'll notice that all of these have positive values as you went through those calculations. So this has just been a quick introduction into how we establish relationships quantitatively with rate. Next, we're gonna take a look at what are the relationships between rate and the amount of the substance, and ultimately, how can we control the rate of the reaction and better understand it. Thanks for watching.